Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and Lesson 44 is the Advanced Engineering Mathematics and Control System of the Banking System that lets me be sure I'm right and all the economists in the world are wrong, and I can bet on it and they can't. Differential Equations where B is the original bank balance, I is the interest rate, and T is time, the differential equation for your bank account is DB over DT, which is equal to IB. So the D stands for delta or change, the DB is the delta change of the balance, the DT is the delta change of the time. That's all there is to it. So the rate of change of your bank balance over time equals your balance times the interest rate, IB. We can now examine the problem not over one cycle with algebra, but over time with exponential functions. The solution to the differential equation DB over DT is equal to IB is exponent IT, e to the IT. E to the IT means that your bank balance will exponentially double in time and then double and double and double and that's an exponential function. It's a crooked nonlinear function. Let's say two men are in a car accident and they both go into comas, one owing the other a dollar or a grand or whatever, one unit of money. The figure shows that if there's no interest, the debt stays friendly and sociable. It's two straight lines for one guy owing a dollar and the other guy being owed one dollar. So now, with that's zero growth. Now, if there is interest, the balances start to grow with time and double in time t, and then again in time t, and then again and again into the exponential curve known as exponent to the it. Now, Laplace transformations are a branch of mathematics which allows engineers to manipulate complex system differential equations algebraically. Like magic, <clears throat> we transform tough real-world functions from real numbers into a function of the Laplace variable s in the imaginary number dimension. There we do our computations algebraically and then reverse transform from the imaginary number dimension to the real-world solution. Nothing in my engineering studies has ever awed me as being more powerful than Laplace transforms and what can be done with them. So the equation in your bank account with interest is 1 over S minus I. Now with the Laplace transform, it's now possible to draw the electrical blueprint of the bank account in the usury banking system. So now remember, with control systems, you have an input and yet going into a box, and then you have an output, which is changed by that box into something else. So in this case, this is a bank account, and it's a control system of a bank account with interest. And it shows that added to any input at that first addition node is 10% interest of the old balance, which is zero to start. So that, let's say you have a pulse of 10 or a 100 volt pulse come in to the first addition node. So added to it is the positive feedback of, from the last balance, which was zero. So 10% of zero is zero. And the new net is a 100 volt pulse that enters into the second addition node, where it is also added to the old balance, still zero, to push the new balance up to 100 volt. Next year, with no new pulse at the input. Added to this zero voltage coming in is 10% interest, a pulse of 10 volts of the pr original $100 deposit. So the 10 volt pulse goes into the second addition node where it's added to the old balance, 100, to push the new balance to 110. After two years, you'll have 11 more interest being added for a balance of 121. After three years, you'll have 12 more for a balance of 133. After four years, you'll have a balance of 146. After five years, you'll have 160. After six years, you'll have 176. After seven years, 194. And after 7.2 years, you'll have six more for a balance of 200. Your money will have doubled. So the same growth will apply to an input of minus 100 volts.
Now this demonstrates quite well what's called the rule of 72. Divide the number 72 by the percent interest, in this case 10%, and that's approximately the number of years it'll take to double, in this case 7.2 years, and then double and double and double. That's what's called an exponential function. At 5%, it should take about 14.4 years to double. At 10%, 7.2 years. At 24%, about 3 years to double. Cycle after cycle with no new inputs, you have the exponential growth, e to the it, which grows as the above series. It acts like bringing a microphone up to a speaker. The sound from the speaker is picked up by the microphone, fed back to make the sound out of the speaker louder, which is picked up and fed back to make it louder until you blow your speaker. Having an unstable positive feedback loop built into a, neg into a system makes that system unstable. Negative feedback loops, where the feedback from the previous balance is subtracted, are very useful in stabilizing systems away from error, but positive feedback always makes the error grow. So, a physical example of negative, positive, and no feedback follows. Let's say you have a bowl, and you put a ball in it, and then you give the ball a little shove. It'll travel up one side, and then gravity will bring it back down. And it'll rock back and forth, back and forth, until it settles back to the middle. That's how engineers use negative feedback to bring back things which have been pushed out of the normal mode of operation. Now, if you pull, turn the ball upside down, and you put the ball on top, and you give it a little shot, well, now the ball is going to start to roll faster and faster and faster as it falls off. That's unstable. Let's say you put the ball on a platform with no ball and you give it a little push. Now, without friction, it'll just keep rolling in steady state forever. So, both zero and negative feedback are acceptable, while positive feedback is always unacceptable, especially in banking. Engineers say that systems are stable if the pole is in, of the system is in the right-hand plane. And so that means that 1 over S minus I. What does S have to be for the denominator to be 0? It has to be plus I minus I to make a 0, which becomes infinity, a singularity. So to have 0 in the denominator, that singularity, that only happens when S is equal to positive I, interest rates. The pull is in the right-hand plane, therefore the system is unstable in engineering parlance. So, eliminating the bad vibrations is as simple as making the interest feedback loop in the bank's computer zero, and using only the simple interior circuit known as the integrator. If you cut the loop, the positive feedback loop, you end up with the interior circuit only, and that is called the integrator. And that simply keeps track of what you got. So this is the control system of an interest-free Let's Bank account. A pulse, positive or negative, comes in. It's added or subtracted from your old balance, and that becomes your new balance, and it stays that way. So this is how a green dollar Let's Bank works. It shows that when you use green dollar credit, the amount you've taken out, which is represented by the top circuit that you owe, and the, or, that you have, sorry, in cash, and the amount you owe, which is represented by the bottom circuit, stay the same. So, the bank has positive 100 that you're owed, and at the bottom, you have negative 100 that is owed. That's your debt, and the cash in your pockets above. Simple, at the end of one or two or three time periods, you always have enough to settle all your debt. We can also see how a usury bank works. It shows that while the amount of cash in your wallet, shown by the upper circuit, remains the same, the debt for that $100, shown in the lower circuit, starts to double and double over time. And all the while, all you have is the original $100 in your possession. So this analysis shows that unemployment and inflation must go to zero 
if the bank's computers are restricted to a pure service charge instead of being allowed to charge both interest and service charges. And note finally the good news that the exponential derivation shows that there are two solutions to the mortgage death gamble. The software solution is interest equal to zero, restricting the bank's computers to a pure service charge and abolishing the interest charge. And the hardware solution is time equals zero, installing an instantaneous electronic cashless marketplace. When you can know who wants what in advance of making it, you have a guaranteed market, no more failed death gambles.